Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. What is the most physically painful experience you've had? When I was a kid I was severely ill with a virus which led to extreme dehydration. At one stage I couldn't hold down food or water for days. I frequently woke up with severe abdominal cramps but one night I woke up and thought my head was splitting open with the worst migraine of my life. I was in so much pain that I couldn't stand or see. I just curled up and begged for the pain to stop. My father carried me to the doctors and my mother sat with me while the doctor told them it was just a virus and it will pass. The doctor had been saying this for nearly two months. My mother snapped and demanded the doctor to at least examine me and not dismiss me. The doctor quickly concluded my appendix had burst and to bring me to ER. The second my father carried me into ER the nurse just took me to the back and I was rushed to ICU. Turned out the cramps were also from dehydration and the virus caused my lungs to collapse and gave me pneumonia. The headache and cramps was something I never want to experience again and make sure to find a way to always be hydrated. I was in so much pain I didn't even notice my lungs were failing. Stabbed myself in the eye with a tree branch which etched what they described as a bat symbol into my cornea. Then had recurrent corneal erosion for 18 months. So think of the worst eye pain imaginable, then repeat daily. It was brutal. Shattered my ankle getting hit by a car while walking. That wasn't the most painful part. Went to hospital to set it, cool. Was transferred to another hospital after a couple days closer to home. They took x-rays and realized the set was not good, so they had to re-break my ankle and set it correctly. That part hurt the most. I was cleaning a fish on a boat and I accidentally popped its bile sack. Squirted me right in the eye. For like 12 hours after it felt like my eye was melting and full of broken glass. Was so painful I spent the whole time screaming in pain uncontrollably. Since I was on a boat in the middle of the sea there was no access to medical help. So they just gave me a thing of eye drops and sent me back to work with the eye patch. For the next two weeks I could only see out of one eye and for some reason it was painfully sensitive to light. So I had to blink rapidly with my working eye while working my 18 hour shift while my asshole co-workers made pirate jokes about me. It was a bad trip. <coughs> had an abscess tooth. For two weeks, my life was nothing but absolute misery, and nothing would kill the pain. At one point, the dentist had to drip numbing agents on the exposed root because it would not freeze, and that felt like a hot needle being jammed behind my eye. Cue a new dentist phobia that has me terrified to even call them when I know there's an issue. <coughs> that time a neurosurgeon drilled out the base of my skull, installed a plate there, and then drilled holes in my top two vertebrae to connect it all. Excruciating pain for months, but the worst was the first two weeks. Any time the pain meds wore off, I was in hell. It felt like nothing I've ever experienced before or since. I became an animal. I wasn't capable of human thought or anything but screaming. It continued for a long time in a more muted way. When I tried to turn my head reflexively, when I accidentally shifted it forward. But the worst by far was when I tried to sleep because I had no control over my movements then. I just woke up screaming many times each night. There was no escape. I was tired all the time, terrified of falling asleep again but also terrified of every potential movement. I had a very secure neck brace on 24-7 for months, but nothing was enough to stop this pain. <coughs> Broke my pelvis in multiple places. ER read the wrong x-rays and sent me home. Three days later, I finally got to ortho after begging, and they immediately started treating. My right leg was basically not attached due to how badly I was broken. Idiot ER doc said nothing wrong and gave me crutches. Um, just no. <coughs> My gallbladder failing. I was young and deployed overseas when it finally kicked the bucket. By the time I got to professionals who knew WTF was going on I had a fully necrotic gallbladder in me that was sectioned off with a 3mm mucous membrane. 
I hadn't eaten for days, kept doing combat patrols, and somehow didn't die. It's all a haze after that but I was evac'd all the way out to Germany and then spent a few months recovering. Good times. <laughs> Crashed in a road bicycle race at over 50 miles per hour imagine jumping out of a car going 50 miles per hour into a pile of bikes while wearing pajamas, that's what this was like. Broke both collar bones, had three nasty cuts that required stitches, and, worst of all, my entire back was covered with road rash. My entire liquor skin suit was ripped away down to my ass and I had embedded gravel throughout my back. They had to scrub the gravel out of my back, for which they gave me local anesthetics but afterwards the pain came on like a freight train. Dull, burning ache all day. I had to wear second skin bandages for about 10 days that bubbled up with pus and needed to be drained. My collarbone sent shooting pain every time I was slightly jarred. Breathing hurt. Taking a shower was murder. I couldn't sleep on my back because it hurt too much, I couldn't sleep on my sides because my collarbones were broken. I had finals for my junior year in high school in the middle of this and I could barely lift my arms to take the tests. <laughs> Tonsillectomy recovery process. I read about rabies and the fear of water and somehow I understand it during my recovery process. Every time you swallows water, your throat tries to regurgitate it back out but even the act of vomiting is painful by itself. Not to mention the scar recovery makes you want to cough every time but afraid of opening your surgery scar. Also kidney stones. <laughs> Did I tell you guys about the time I tore a hole in my scrotum on a rusty nail head on a dock? Edit I found the story from my old account. Enjoy. I was working at a summer camp and we had to put the docks in the lake at the beginning of the summer. We had to carry the floating docks down and put them in place and attach them and all that good stuff. They would get a bit worn over the winter with the freeze and thaw. I was sitting on the dock with my legs in the water when we were done. I was wearing a pair of umbro shorts, very thin material, and I decided to go for a quick swim. I put my hands on either side of my thighs and picked myself up an inch and slid forward into the water. I did not see the rusty nail head sticking up between my legs and I slid over it. As I entered the water the terrible pain from my crotch spread throughout my body. I had torn open my ball sack on a rusty nail head. As I popped up from under the water screaming my co-workers were laughing because they thought I was screaming because the water was still cold. It did not even bleed right away. The nail had torn right down the center line of my sack. I could see my balls and the tubes etc inside. After a quick look I did not look again because it made me feel lightheaded. I was bundled into the truck and we hauled ass to the hospital to get stitched up. My ball sack and nuts, after the initial swelling, were no worse for the wear. You can't really see any scar now because it was right on the center line. Some stitches and antibiotics and a tetanus shot and I was good as new. The pain was pretty bad but not as bad as you would think. Weird right? One more edit, testicles are white and look fat covered. Additional point, they work fine, we have an awesome sun. <laughs> My BM after the 8th day, of 11, in the hospital on morphine. It took an enema to loosen it a bit, then a gloved nurse had to assist by pulling the initial blockage out. It was on at that point. I filled the bedpan. It looked like a mountain when I was done. I was in tears. It was brutally painful. <laughs> Spinal tap where the doctor couldn't seem to get it right. The man stuck the needle in my spine nine times. Ended up testing negative for meningitis, but my reaction to the spinal tap put me in the hospital for four days. <laughs> Having a miscarriage. As bad as my cramps are, so bad that I throw up, this was worse. I went ghost white, had cold sweats, BP was 220 100, was sobbing without tears, and couldn't breathe the pain was so intense. Work rushed me out in an ambulance because I couldn't walk. It was during COVID so I had to face the miscarriage alone, which made it even harder. <laughs> Cleaning gums of infection after wisdom teeth removed. 
it was just starting to show infection and they wanted to make sure it didn't get worse so they took a surgical spoon and scraped my gums like a dirty grill. My legs spasmed. They numbed it, but it still was quite intense. <laughs> Getting the epidural. Once it took effect I felt nothing, not even when I tore so giving birth is not my answer. But when the anesthesiologist stuck that needle in my spine, right as the biggest contraction yet hit. I cannot describe the noise I made. It was pressure in my pelvis, like a bowling ball weight just sitting between my hips. My whole midsection in one giant cramp and a huge needle in my spine all at the same moment. Then the electric jolt down my left side. 15 minutes later I was basically dead from the bottom of my ribs down. <laughs> Gallstones. Multiple tests showed I was fine and no single doctor would give me the referral to the surgeon so I just contacted a surgeon and had it out one month later. Apparently I have to go back again for tests because the tubes can still create stones and the pain is back. When I got my IUD inserted. My cervix was propped open with forceps and then felt a really strong pinch and throbbing pain. The only time your cervix comes close to being that wide open and having stuff go through it is during childbirth, ironic because I was there to avoid that. After the procedure was over I proceeded to vomit, and then immediately ran to empty my bowels. My husband had to get me a wheelchair to bring me out to the car I felt so bad. Sweating, cramping, nauseous, and weak. For the rest of the day I stayed in bed, I could barely move because the cramps were so bad. I'm so glad I don't have to do that again for another 10 years. <laughs> Had shingles didn't go to the DR until it looked like leprosy, the instant the DR seen it he said wow you must love pain. The next year had a broken ankle playing baseball while being wheeled into emergency room by my nephew he rammed my extended leg into the door jam, I think my eyes rolled back on my head with a mini blackout I couldn't even cry. <laughs> hemorrhoid removal surgery. I had prolapsed hemorrhoids from giving birth. They didn't hurt but over the counter methods and diet changes were never going to fix them and it was awful for my self esteem. My only option was to have surgery involving the DR cutting them out. He told me I was going to regret it, but I figured by then I would just deal. To be fair the procedure didn't hurt since I was knocked out. It didn't really hurt for a few hours after either. But once I was home and the meds wore off, all I could do for a week was cry in between naps. It felt like someone had shoved razor blades up my butt and left them there. It is way more painful than childbirth. The pain was constant. Nothing gave me relief. The oxy only dimmed the pain enough to sleep. After a week I was able to walk, but not sit. Going to the bathroom made me physically ill. After a month I could finally sit on a pillow. After six weeks I finally felt like a human again. So for about a month I did regret it. Now I am so happy I did it but I'm not sure I would make that choice again knowing what I know now. <laughs> Wife accidentally rolled the automatic car window of her second generation Prius up on my thumb, snapping the bone between my last knuckle and the fingernail. This happened to be the year model before the safety mechanism was added. Honestly worse pain than either of my two intestinal blockages due to Crohn's and the preceding surgery. I've decided that if I'm ever subject to torture and threatened with finger breakage I'll instead sing like a canary. I have had a transrectal ultrasound wherein a large tube is forcefully plunged into your virgin butthole, severe PMS cramps, stepped on Legos, migraine, hell PF calves cramp, pulled muscle. But toothache beats them all. One time I was alone in my university apartment and had this toothache, did everything took a lot of pills to stop the pain, did all the home remedies saw on every possible sites, did all the yoga poses but none worked and I didn't get to sleep a bit that night. Amazing how my mind can easily see suicide as an option to stop that pain. I got a horrible case of fungal jock itch from the dorm showers in college. I've handled athlete's foot plenty of times before but the creases and folds of a scrotum are much harder to treat. 
the situation quickly devolved to where even topical antifungals were no longer effective and I was developing open sores on my scrotum. Every single step I took sent shockwaves of pain through my body as I limped across campus between classes and the cafeteria. Fun fact, you can't bandage a scrotum. I had heard of liquid band-aid and assumed it'd be like rubber cement you used in school. What I didn't know is it's basically just nail polish. Applying that is literally the only thing in my adult life that's actually made me cry from the amount of pain I was in. Shortly after the open sores led to a secondary bacterial skin infection that spread across my thighs and lower stomach before I finally sought medical intervention. Oral antibiotics and oral antifungals finally resolved the issues. Two months of constant genital torture and sleeping one hour at a time before the numbing spray wore off and the pain woke me up has significantly raised my pain tolerance though. I also lost about 20 pounds because my hunger would have to get bad enough to make me drudge through the pain of walking to and from the cafeteria, my only source of food as a broke college student. Well, let's see, in the army in 1997, at NTC in the Mojave Desert, I stepped on a cactus spine that went through the bottom of my combat boot into my foot. In 2007, I was awoken from a nap with the worst pain I've ever felt. A disc had herniated, actually two discs, and the nerve finally slipped in and got pinched. I had to wait two months of that pain to get a disc removed. Still had issues, and that's when that bastard doctor finally admitted there were two discs that needed surgery but he only removed one that day. It was but a few weeks later I heard a report on NPR talking about how doctors would do that to guarantee two surgery payments from insurance. Giving birth vaginally to a child too big for my birth canal and being mismanaged over 36 hours of pain. I should have been given a C-section but wasn't. It was 14 years before I could bring myself to have another pregnancy and when my consultant read my birth notes he booked my C-section 5 months in advance. It was a literal shit show and I'll be forever traumatized by it. I had an infection after a major surgery so they had to put a drain in. They were putting it in on my lower back just above my right butt check, and it was the worst pain I have ever felt in my entire life. It felt like they were shoving giant nails through me trying to nail me to the table. It wasn't just one poke either, I swear that doctor was a sadist. Warning, gross. I had something called a pilonidal cyst. It's a cyst that forms right above your tailbone and hurts like a bitch cause you can't sit or lay down without putting pressure on it. After days of it getting gradually more inflamed and painful, I went to get it drained at the doctor's office. It was already like a 7 tenths pain just at rest. He injected a local anesthetic and I felt every inch of that needle, but it didn't even numb me. Doc went in with a scalpel to slice open and drain the fucker, I had to bite down on my arm so hard I drew blood. I can't even begin to describe how painful it was, literally blacked out my vision. I think my mom was in the room but I was screaming and cussing like no tomorrow. He had to squeeze the area hard to get everything out, then shoved some gauze in the hole where it was. I had to just lay there for a few minutes after he finished and regain my sanity. I seriously walked out out of that office a changed person. I was supposed to get surgery to have it removed permanently, but COVID happened. I'm just praying every day it doesn't flare up again, I'd rather be shot than go through that again. I mean this 100% seriously. When my parents wrote me a letter disowning me and stating their intent to get a court order if I didn't have my stuff out of their house in a week. I was always very close with my mom especially. Being ostracized gave me crushing anxiety and tore me up inside. I was physically ill for about two weeks and became almost non-functional. It was so deeply emotionally upsetting that it was produced literal physical pain. I had a urethroplasty last year because I couldn't pee. I basically needed to have a new urethra installed, made from a graft of my own cheek skin. They made an incision under and around the head of my penis so that it was held on by a flap at the top, then another incision that ran a bit down the underside. My dick looked like Frankenstein with all of the stitches. 
The morning erections were really, really bad. My dick would swell around the stitches, which didn't stretch, and my penis felt like it was pulling itself apart. On the inside, the swelling would push my new urethra against the Foley catheter, which added a whole other dimension to the pain I felt. I would bleed from both dick hole and stitches. There really are no words to describe how painful it was. I obviously couldn't jack off, so there was no way to stop it from happening. My surgeon prescribed me a strong dose of Valium, which helped knock them down after they started, but there was nothing I could do, besides stay awake, to prevent them. I've had kidney stones but this was worse. I honestly can't think of anything that could ever be more painful. <laughs> Labor and birthing my two kids, thankfully not at the same time. They are 14 years apart and by the time I got pregnant with the second I had forgotten about the trauma of the first. That was my misdoing and I realized my error, when I had the woman in the room next to mine on the hospital maternity ward scream out it's going to kill me. That's when I remembered what I was in for and started to sob uncontrollably. <coughs> I had an ectopic pregnancy. For those who don't know the embryo attaches outside the uterus and in my case the fallopian tube. It grows there but quickly runs out of room. My tube ruptured and morphine did nothing to help. I have a pretty high pain tolerance due to chronic back pain I've lived with most my life. This had me in tears. Had to have the tube surgically removed. The emotional loss came later but at the time all I cared about was stopping the pain. Happy ending though, currently pregnant and it's in the right spot. Yay. <coughs> Period cramps. I had both my kids naturally. Pain was the same as my monthly cramps. I could never figure out how girls handled life so easily. Until at age 49 I finally had a hysterectomy and I don't have to deal with that every month. I'm so bitter at all the doctors that gaslight me over the years telling me everyone has period pain. Because of it I learned to self-medicate, what days I could slash could not schedule appointments, and developed an incredibly high pain tolerance. So when I would see the DR instead of going to the ER, they assumed I was fine. After my surgery, another DR tried to tell me they shouldn't have done a hysterectomy. Oh man, you have no idea how quickly I shut that down. <coughs> this marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.